If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding edge tools and tactics to micro fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, 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 CEO Mischief Makers. Yes, welcome back. It's got to be Friday. It's got to be the day that we get to get down in the weeds. I, I lo- I'm a person who loves all, all parts of the spectrum, the 30,000 foot, I've got to start there. I can't go down into the weeds without understanding where we're headed, right? The, the mm-hmm. concepts, the feelings, the mindsets, all those things. But now we get to actually let the rubber meet the road. So welcome back to the conversation. My wonderful guest, Teresa McCloy, uh, Teresa, the last two conversations have been, I mean, amazing. Um, I just, I love how you talked about innovation this last time and, uh, innovating the, the typical coaching to, uh, to your, your concept and inviting people and expecting people to participate in that process. So now we get to actually get into that detail. Tell me a little bit more about the strategy that someone needs to kind of come into your process with, and strategically looking at their life. And then we're going to get down into, okay, now how can they practice some of these things? Yeah. So as we kind of ended the last conversation, you know, many times the person that's coming is to that place of change needs to happen. I, this isn't working for me. You know, we've all heard that quote, how's that working for you? Well, it's not. And a lot of times when many of our clients come to us, they are coming from that very doing space. So two words I use is doing and being, and they're in that very doing space. I need you to help me fix my calendar. I need you to help me, you know, uh, make more happen or do, and they're very much about the productivity mindset. And the strategy that we know is let's, okay, let's get a little bit of grasp. Let's do a little work right there. But until we really get down into the nitty gritty and the weeds of why are you procrastinating on on those things? Why are you hitting the wall every Friday and feeling like you're not completing whatever it was you thought you would? Why are your relations? So we, as we get into the weeds and we start asking more questions, we know strategically we've got to go down into the being part of things. And that's where you know, most people that come seeking, like, I need to do this differently. Um, There's a little resistance that comes at that point, right? A little bit, but that's where we're going to go. We're going to go into the strategy then of walking through the four components, putting a little bit of Band-Aid on the top level, and then coming down into the weeds of things. Awesome. So then let's think about those weeds, because I know you have a very specific process that people can adapt to their lives. Uh, Mm -hmm. Take me through some of those actual tactics and processes that uh, people can use. Sure. So um, we have, we actually use a guidebook. We use a process. We use some worksheets, some different, you know, get your hands on it. Um, To be honest, I would prefer that somebody work with writing it out than digital, you know, we're in a digital age, but I really prefer that somebody get into the book, get into the worksheets and really do some connecting of their head, their heart and their body. So there's something even about writing down. So we use just a process, four different components that we're walking our clients through to say, what's the foundational being that you have How do we put that into actionable steps? How do we put that, as I said, into your calendar and then sustain it over time? Then that becomes a very repeatable process. So a lot of worksheets, for example, uh, one of the tactical, super tactical things we do is in component number three, uh, we talk about real life time. How does this play out in my everyday ordinary life? 
And so we have some specific questions, especially uh, I think one of the things that makes our process a little bit different is around something we call the people block. So we use four blocks of time, present block, or excuse me, yeah, present block, people block, project block, and prep block. And it's not like we're trying to say block your calendar exactly like this. Again, it's big concepts, right? Of your, your present block looks different than mine. That's your self-care and soul care. Well, you get to decide what goes in there, but we're going to name it because if you come to me as my client and you say, well, I don't know, I never get any time for myself. And then we really look at your calendar and you say, but I go to the gym three times a week and I walk my dog and I do this. I'm like, Mm, let's call it what it is. Let's give it language. Right. But one of the ones that I think is the most interesting is the second one, which is people blocks and the tactic of just saying, who do I need to get on my calendar and who do I need to get off my calendar? It's a huge question for people. So those are just some of the ways that we ask some questions around that. Who in your community do you want to see on your calendar? Who in your family needs to be on your calendar in the next 90 days? Who, you know, when are you hanging out with your spouse, if you're married or your partner? What what are the people that matter to you? And if you say they matter, your children, your adult kids, where are they? Where are you claiming time with them? So that's the way we get down into the weeds and just tactically, there's so many aha moments that go off for people. Even your listeners right now, they're going, oh, yeah. yeah. I, oh my, I want to ask all those questions. Like, yeah, you're right. I got like, to schedule that. I got to figure yeah, out what that Yeah, I need to schedule that. Is. I need to. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the words I use a lot is pre-decide. Our brain can only make so many decisions. So if you can learn the tactical skill of pre-deciding as much as possible, I know that Friday night, my husband and I are doing something together because that's time I've claimed for several years now. I don't know what it is. It could be pizza and a movie, could be a great dinner out. It could be, but we don't have to think about it. We just know that Friday night, that's what we're doing. That's a pre-decision that matters so much in the long run of that relationship. So that's the tactical parts of things that we do in our process. That's amazing. And it's very, very true. When we, we've started with that big picture, we've come down to how do you, how can you take a concept and, and bring yourself into it and, and put your own work into it. And now we're looking at, all right, what does that look like in my life? And so mm-hmm. if you have little kids and you've got school or you're homeschooling and you've got church and you've got synagogue, or you've got any of these other, you've got your volunteer work, all of those things, you have to look at all those places you're putting out and then make sure you have your yourself included in there as well. And you take care of your own uh, needs because again, the oxygen mask in the airplane, not a new concept to anybody, (laughs) right? You got to put that on because you can't save anybody without saving yourself first. And so um, once you put those, those most important things in yourself should be first, because again, you Mm -hmm. can't help anyone else without helping yourself. And then you go down the list of most important parts of your life that need to be scheduled or accounted for, or made space for whatever words you want to use to describe it. And then once you do that, you, you can kind of breathe a sigh of relief, Mm -hmm. right? Because then you don't have to to rush and worry. Yeah. And if you pre-decided back in, in our process, in the very first component, you say, what are the seven to eight big rock things? And you look at that on a regular basis. Is that still a big rock? You know, as my children went from little kids to young adults, they're in a different season of their life. I'm not responsible for them anymore. So, you know, I can put them in a different place than I did when I had little bitty kids. So you get to constantly upgrade your your framework. But when you know that, then it's easier to get into the day-to-day. And here's the misnomer I think that we've been taught to that we can have life balance, right? Yeah, there's no such thing. It's harmony, but it's not balance. Because to move your life forward, you can't try to move your life forward in seven or eight categories seven or eight areas. So if I'm really working on my health and one business project is what I call them, not goals, yeah, that's about all I can do in the next 90 days. But if I can really focus on those for three months, I can, I can get good traction. And then I go back and say, now what, 
Now what's the thing? Is it still that? Or is it, I take the pause, I take the rest, I take the retreat. What's next? Yeah. And it all cycles through eventually through your discernment. So that's the tactical way um, that we help people just move forward in those ways. That's what we wrote about in the book. That's what's there um, is my story, our process, and then some ways to live it out and sustain it. Uh, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the weeds. <laughs> it is. And it's all really, I, I agree with you about balance. Um, I used to have a podcast called parent entrepreneur power. And the whole concept of that was uh, first off that there's no such thing as balance. It's all choices. It's all choices of where to spend our time. That's all it is. And sometimes we need to spend more time at home or with the kids or with one kid or some situation. And sometimes there's more time that we have to spend at work. We're launching something. There's a change in something. I mean, it, it's all a choice. Um, also, what was very interesting to me during that process was that uh, the stages of uh, parenting were the same as the stages in business. You have a newborn, you are just enamored by this little creature. You can't stop looking at it, talking about it, thinking about it, um, loving it, kissing it up, everything, everything was around this newborn. And then it, the stages continued after that. Well, when you start a business, it's the exact same thing, right? You're you, so in love with it. your business, right? You are, it is the greatest you thing you've ever done in your life. You talk to and everybody then, about it. <laughs> then they become an adult, the business becomes an adolescent and you're yes. like, Yes. Oh my gosh. Get me they out have of problems. here. Yeah. Get me out of here. And then it's learning to let that run into uh, being an adult standing on yes. its own. Right. And yes. being proud that this functions, but yeah. yeah, we've been told that that can all happen overnight, but that's part of taking all of your life. To me, that's part of what I want people to be in the process. Don't just be about work and doing. Don't just be about being, it's whole self living, real life living, real life is going on. You're going to get the phone call that you need to leave the office or do something because the kids are sick or something happened to your spouse or whatever it might be. It's real life. Yeah. So how do we learn to not set ourselves up that we can do it all and say, you know what? I can love it all in stages and phases like business, right? But, yes. but it does all belong. And, and it's my life different than yours. Yeah. What kind of um, experience have you had with people who've gone through your system? How, what kinds of transformations or, or uh, changes have they encountered through going through? Well, that process? was the beauty of um, getting to write the book is I wasn't really super motivated to write the process out in a book until we had started our certification program. So once we started certifying people to take this repeatable process and use it in the work that they were doing, I'm like, okay, now there's a reason to put it in a book. Now there's a reason to put it out there because I get to share their stories. So all throughout the book, we have stories of, and actually we just uh, created a video. We have a 15 minute documentary that we have that's coming out uh, here after the first of the year as well. And in it, one particular story, um, one of our certified facilitators is talking about um, seeing her teenage son, who's a senior in high school, he's getting way to, ready to go away. And she said, just saying to him, Hey, let's get in the car and go for a drive on Sunday afternoon and connect, you know, windshield time is always the best time. You're not going to get an 18 year old boy, uh, to sit and say, Oh, tell me how you're feeling. Right. <laughs> but if you can get him in a car and she tells the story of saying, Hey, I'll fill your tank. Let's go for a drive. Let's go get a burger. Let's go do something. Those are memories that she's created and moments is what I call them. Extraordinary moments that she's created that you can never get back. Um, and so that's just one example of just watching people just go, wow, this matters to me and I'm going to do it differently. And I'm going to create moments. One of the quotes I say in the book is moments are in the margin. The reason we do our calendar and the reason we pre-decide things is so that there's white space. And in those white spaces is where you're going to find the great conversation, uh, at the water cooler or at the kitchen table with your kids 
or whatever. It's in the moments, in the it's in the cracks and crevices that you're going to remember. You're not going to remember sitting in front of your screen, uh, you know, cranking out the greatest email that you ever sent, right? <laughs> or whatever. You're not going to go, oh, I remember that Thursday afternoon when I wrote that. But you will remember the conversation, the pause, the moments that are there in those margins, those white spaces. Yes. And I'll tell you, I agree so much with this process because if you structure your life this way, you can actually live the life you want and, 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 and craft your business or your job around the life you want to live. And those are going to, that's that the way that looks is going to change based on the season. So I remember Mm -hmm. very vividly when I had my first son, I was the uh, main breadwinner. I was working full time. I negotiated four day work week with my employer so that I could be home three days with my son. And uh, through that process, stayed with that uh, type of job, had the second son still in that type of job. But at eight months pregnant, I fell and broke both my legs. And so that was a wake up call for me to go, okay, whoa, let's slow down. That was how Mm -hmm. I took it. Slow down, figure out how you're going to do this. Uh, It was always my dream to be able to be home with the kids. So um, I started my first business when my Mm -hmm. youngest was 18 months old. And through that process, I was able to craft that by doing what matters to be Mm -hmm. able to structure the business around when the kids were napping, when they were asleep at night, that was my choice. I know lots of uh, mompreneurs or, or uh, people and parents in business uh, do daycare and do all these. That's, t- that's your, that was your choice. You're developing your life the way you want. My choice was I wanted to be there. And one of the, one of the um, effects of that was when I was picking up my oldest from middle school And he comes to the car and uh, asks me, um, he had just had his sex education class that day. So he asked me a very explicit question before he even got into the car. I'm picking him up and it's warm spring day. And he asks me through the open window, mom, what's oral sex? And I'm like, uh... And of course, everybody's around me with their windows open, right? (laughs) And I'm like, waiting to see how you're going to answer that one let's get in the car and chat and, you know, let's get in the car and we'll drive home. And, you know, I, I'm asking him like, are you sure you want to know the answer to this question? Because once you know, you can't unknow. Unknow this. <laughs> so no, are you sure? And, but I was available for that conversation. Yes. Uh, yes. And that was what was the most important thing to me at the time mm-hmm. was to be available and open and uh, readily available for those kinds of conversations. Not that he didn't go to his friends. I'm sure they all talked about things, but I was available as a trusted resource to be comfortable enough to ask that question to mm. me. And that was that's the key that comfortable enough to be present to the moment, right. To be there. The interesting thing that I hear a lot, I don't know if you hear this is we are a lot of people in our world that are like, Oh, I'm building this business so I can work from anywhere and I can travel all the time and I can do all this. And the question I want to ask is why not now? Yeah. Why are you doing it for someday? Like I'm going to build this business so that And that's one of the things that I've really realized in the past year, even working towards writing the book and, and working with more and more clients is why can't we just do that now? What's stopping you from setting up that real life that you want now? Um, You know, I just had one of my best friends works on my team diagnosed with stage four terminal cancer. She's 61 years old, same age as me. One of my dearest friends. And I'm like, you know, it just keeps reminding me, I get to choose what I'm doing, where I'm traveling, where I'm going, what memories I'm creating, what moments I'm having. And they're there every day. We seem to think they're going to be out there somewhere. Someday I'll do this someday. You know, when I got done riding the bike or riding the bike, writing the book, I wanted an e-bike. That's what I wanted. I wanted an e-bike, a bright red one to ride with my hair in the wind. I don't have much hair, but I'm going to ride with it in the wind. And I'm like, I'm not waiting. I'm buying the e-bike, you know, and I'm not saying go out and buy everything, but live your best real life now, not I'm going to work, 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 work. So someday I'll have the life I wanted. 
Um, that's part of the process is embracing it now because it's right there in front of you. Just take the blinders off and let's see what's there, right? Okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted, you were inspired to innovate and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.